probably you have heard about Open Zeppelin because of the security audits we performed. Last year we audited the Solidity compiler, we also audited a lot of projects for Coinbase, we audited uh, back in the days the Serpent language and we broke it by the way. And most recently we audited the, the well-known Compound and Instant. You probably also know, uh, know us because of the Open Zeppelin Contracts Repository, one of the most used libraries in this ecosystem that has more than 22k of downloads per week and that probably everyone that has developed an ERC-20 or uh, ERC-721 probably used this library. So, the agenda for today. We're gonna go through how we can develop smart contracts using the Open Zeppelin SDK. Afterwards, we are gonna see how we can build jobs super, super easy using the Open Zeppelin starter kits. And afterwards, we're gonna talk about some DX UX, I mean, problems we faced while, you know, developing DApps for, for users. And we're gonna talk about the Open Zeppelin GSM tools. So the first part of this talk is gonna be about DX, and the second one about UX. Developer experience, <coughs> user experience. So let's start with DX. It's super important for us to uh, know what problem we have here? I think that if you, as software developers or developers, um, have worked in other ecosystems, probably you know that our tools are still super, super green compared to those other ecosystems. And us in Open Zeppelin basically love to build stuff for you to make your life easier. And that's why we built two super useful tools that are the Open Zeppelin SDK and the Open Zeppelin Starter Kits. Let's begin with the Open Zeppelin SDK. The Open Zeppelin SDK is a software development kit or a software development tool, basically a CLI that will let you develop your smart contracts, compile them with any version of Solidity you want, deploy them with this only with one command, upgrade them, and we can talk later about that, um, interact with them in a super easy way, and also start your dApps like in five minutes. How you can use it? Well, it's an NPM package, Open Zeppelin CLI, so just running NPM, NPM install at Open Zeppelin slash CLI will do the trick. Um, you will probably first want to uh, initialize your project. You can do it that you can do that using the Open Zeppelin init command. It basically will run a lot of stuff that will create your contracts folder, it will set up your network configuration file, and a couple of other things for you to track your different contracts within your project. So, basically, we want to develop smart contracts. We have a my contract uh, contract, which has a do something function that receives a something from her, some super, super easy to understand. We only have to run Open Zeppelin create, specifying the contract name and the network name, and that's all. You will have your contract, de your contract deployed to the blockchain, to the main net network in this case. But if you forgot about the contract name or the network name, it's fine. All the Open Zeppelin contracts are interactive. All the Open Zeppelin commands are interactive, and you will be able to just run Open Zeppelin create and the CLI will guide you in the process of deploying your contract. So for example, here we have a contract, my contract in mainnet at the address 1AF, the one that starts with 1AF. And we probably want to talk with our contracts, right? Because we have already de deployed them and we want to, for example, call functions, uh, see the value of our variables, or maybe just do transactions. The Open Zeppelin SDK has two super handy commands, which are call and send transaction. Call for calling pure and view functions and send transaction to any other public function of our contract that will actually make a transaction. The, use, the usage is super, super easy. Interactive comments. If you just run Open Zeppelin call or send transaction, it will ask you to pick a network of your network configuration file. It then will list all the instances you can create. Afterwards, it will, I mean, not create, but to call. 
Afterwards, it will list all the functions that that, that uh, contract has. For example, here they do something I already show, and I call me maybe function. And just by uh, selecting the something, it will ask you for each parameter the function has. And that's it, that's it. You will see the transaction cache, which you will be probably able to copy and paste in Etherscan and see how it did. But well, we know that uh, software development, contract development are, is done by developers, and developers are persons, people. People make mistakes every time. We know this, we know what's happening right now in the smart contract ecosystem. We can just push our broken code and a lot of dollars, millions of dollars can be lost. And it's important to have like tools for getting rid of these problems. So probably upgrading our contract is the solution. If we have a my contract solution, my contract contract with our do something function which might be broken, we can modify it with this, just modifying the code. We can also add new functionality and just run the open zeppelin upgrade command which will re-upload the new code in the exactly same address. I'm not gonna go super super deep in this topic. Um, you can afterwards, after the, the talk, ask me questions, but if you want to just see how it works, you can go to zeppelin slash upgrades and that just a documentation for you. Anything else? Well, yeah. We have seen all the left commands, the, the list that is on the left, you need create a great call and send transaction, but we also developed a lot of super handy commands, for example, open something compile for compiling your contracts with any solid version you want, open something verify for verifying them in Etherscan or Etherchain, open something accounts for listing all your accounts within a network, open something transfer for transferring not only Ether but also ERC20 tokens, open something balance for querying the balance of an account, again, in Ether and in ERC20 tokens, and open something on pack that is bolded. I don't know why it's bolded. And the, um, okay, okay. So probably Pala, who made this presentation for me because I'm super lazy for making my own presentations, wanted to say me something, right? Well, basically, the Open Zeppelin Unpack is the command that will let us let us link the Open Zeppelin SDK with the Open Zeppelin Starter Kits. Open Zeppelin Starter Kits are basically uh, DApps scaffoldings that will let us start our DApps super super easy. They include the well-known open sampling contracts, the open sampling SDK we have been uh, talking about, Infura for connecting to any blockchain, Ethereum blockchain, uh, a one-liner that will allow us to configure super, super easy Web3, React and Remove for our front-end um, components, and also the open sampling hot loader, which is basically a tool we developed for you to uh, modify your contract and see the changes of that contract in your web app, just saving the file. So you add a new function, for example, and you are reading the ABI of that contract, you will be able, by saving the file, see that new functionality within your website. So, super easy again to use. With the SDK, we just have to run open Zeppelin Unpack Starter, which is basically a, an empty version of the starter kit, so you can start your project from, from scratch. Or open Zeppelin Unpack Tutorial, which has a Super fancy tutorial we're gonna see later. Or open something on Pack GSM. And I put here a spoiler alert because we're gonna go uh, deeper into GSM uh, in a couple of minutes. But just running npm run start with a little trick, you will be able to see the demo. Uh, there are two examples for you to learn how to use the open Zeppelin SDK, the Puncher and EBM packages. Super easy to understand. If you're gonna go and see what is this, please go to Zeppelin slash starter kits or Zeppelin slash SDK to see what actually the SDK is. And I think that we may have solved the DX problem here. I mean, we have a lot of DX problems, but maybe, you know, now you can start your project, deploy them with only one command, interact with, interact with it with other command, upgrade it with other command, verify them with other command, but this doesn't solve, I mean, this is solving our problem as developers. 
But what about the problem that uh, users, like real people, has? Like people that every day sits in their desktops or their laptops. For example, my father, which, by the way, loves to buy stuff in the internet. Um, I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. We don't have Amazon there, but we have a very similar website that is called Mercado Libre. That basically is exactly the same. You can buy whatever you want for, I don't know, food, uh, stuff, and just by adding your credit card, using your credit card, you can get your stuff in your home like two days later. But what about, uh, my, by the way, my dad is 73 years old, so what would happen to him if he's in his computer and he sees this folks? Like, what the fuck? What the fuck is Metamask? What the fuck are mnemonics? What is private keys? What are private keys? Super cumbersome for him. Not for us because we're developers, but for a real user it will be super cumbersome. So my dad will be sad because he won't be able to buy his stuff and the folks will troll him. And that's not good. So this is a fact and it's a well known fact by the way that we lose the 90% of our users in the install Metamask image. Um, Clearly, what we are missing is user experience. That's why um, I'm super happy to introduce you to the gas station network, which is the ultimate onboarding solution for Ethereum applications. Basically, the GSN uh, is a great contract architecture in the blockchain that was uh, first developed by Tabuki and afterwards developed by, by an alliance of uh, companies, Tabuki Open Zeppelin Portis, uh, Pillar, for solving the user onboarding problem. I'm gonna give you a brief, a brief introduction about this. Basically, the GSN uh, is composed by a decentralized group of relayers who are paid for relaying transactions. We're gonna go deeper uh, into this later, but believe me, there are like, you know, relayers. Uh, a single and audited by uh, Open Zeppelin contract for coordinating everything that is called the Relay Hub. Your dApps will pay for their own transactions. I mean, if I made an app, I adapt, I will pay for the transactions, not the user. So my dad doesn't have to, or any user doesn't have, doesn't have to struggle with the fobs, which is great. So let's go and see how does it work. These are our players, find your user, my dad, the relayer, the relay hat, and the recipient contract, which is our smart contract that is linked to our dad. We all know how a regular transaction works, my dad talks to MetaMask, and MetaMask help him, helps him to talk with the contract in the Ethereum blockchain. We also know how meta, meta transactions, regular meta transactions work. My dad will talk with a relayer, and the relayer will talk with the blockchain, maybe, or probably using a, an identity contract uh, assigned for my dad. The GSM meta transaction uh, solution works slightly different. Basically, my dad will talk to a relayer. This relayer will check whether or not the recipient contract has funds for paying the transaction fees and to pay the relayer fee, because here we have a relayer fee. If you're a relayer, if you want to start up a relayer, which is super easy to, to do, like a, a, another five minute uh, thing, um, you will be able to uh, actually get paid for those transactions you relay. So if you have 100 relayers and there are a lot of transactions that you are relaying, you will be winning, earning money. So, um, as I was saying, the relayer will check whether or not the recipient contract uh, has funds to pay for this transaction fee and the relayer fee. And if it does, uh, then the relayer ha the relay have this contract that is, uh, by the way, uh, deployed by us in every single blockchain and, and it's unique. There's only one for each blockchain. We'll do the several checks, for example, uh, if the relay call uh, is legitimate and afterwards it, it will ask the recipient contract whether or not it wants to accept the relay call. Um, if it does, well, it will actually send the relay call to the contract, to the recipient contract, and the recipient and the rake hub will be able to pay the relayer for that uh, transaction. So basically, it's a meta transaction on roids because you don't have you. Uh, and when I say you, is basically the smart contract developer or the app developer. You don't have to like think about 
uh, you know, assigning uh, identity contracts to users and maybe afterwards ask the user to please add his credit card for, you know, doing a simple transaction by pressing a button in your website. That's why I told you here that jobs pay for their own transactions, which is great, at least for the onboarding problem we have. And how can we use this stuff? Because I'm talking a lot of technical stuff and maybe you just want to use it. Well, we developed uh, as a team the GSM provider. G you can install it using NPM. The GSM provider is basically yet another Web3 provider that you will be able to use to transform your regular transactions into meta transactions, into relay have, relay GSM transactions. So just by changing your typical HTTP provider to the GSM provider, you will be able to do a call as in the third line. My contract dot methods dot do something, the contract we were seeing before, dot send, and that's all. Instead of you instead of doing a regular transaction, it will do a meta transaction. Which is great, right? So you only have to 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 change one one line. Also, you have to make your contract GSM capable. And for that, the Open Zeppelin contracts or Open Zeppelin Solidity team created a couple of contracts. Uh, for example, the GSM recipient that you will find just installing, obviously, Open Zeppelin contracts, uh, which just inheriting, uh, yes, if you have your contract and you inherit uh, from it, you will be able to access to the accept relay call. This function I told you that uh, checks uh, whether or not the recipient contract wants to uh, receive the, the transaction or not. Well, you can code that in the accept relay call. And what else? The Open Zeppelin GSM helper. So maybe it could be for you to, you know, set up everything to develop your own uh, GSM capable capable of apps. And um, we basically developed these GSN helpers for you to make it like in only one command. Just by after installing the GSN helpers, running, if you run OS GSN run relayer, this will basically create a relay hub in your local network if it's not created. It will download the binary of the relayer, it will then start the relayer, it will associate that relayer to uh, the relay hub and will fund it so it's uh, capable of receiving transactions, relay, relay calls. And if you don't like CLIs, you also can use a programmatic way, which will be basically importing a register relay function and a fund recipient function from the same library, and just with a one-liner, you will be able to or run the relayer or fund the recipient or whatever you want to do. And we have been talking only about CLIs, code, but we also developed some web tools. You can go to Zeppelin slash GSN tool, which will let you see, I mean, if you develop your contracts and you upload them and you link them to the gas station network, if they are GSN capable, you will be able to see all the information of the DAP tool, uh, with the DAP tool, and also uh, see information about their relatives. But okay, I know I have like talked a lot about a lot of like you know tools, 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 tools. So spoiler alert ended. You can use the starter kit, the GSN starter kit, just by running with the CLI Open Zeppelin Unbug GSN, and you will there have the Open Zeppelin contracts and CLI as you had in the previous starter kits. In fewer gonna react Greenville again, and you will also have it within this starter kit the Open Zeppelin GSN provider and the GSN helper. So basically, by running op MPX, okay, this command, Open Zeppelin unbug GSN, you will be able to just start your GSN capable uh, job. And well, uh, that's all. This is the all, uh, these are all the repositories we have been working on for the last year, the contracts, the CLI, the GSN provider, the GSN helpers, the Open Sampling Network and Open Sampling Test Helper for you to test your contracts. You can please go to Sampling slash GitHub to see all of this and also to Sampling slash Docs to see the documentation. And well, thank you very much.